Hello and welcome to my new Let's Play series, Klonoa 2, Lunatia's Veil. Vale. I am Ultimo, speaking on behalf of GA Retro and GARetro.com. Please check out those two web... Uh, well, it's just one website, but please check it out and enjoy all of the fun stuff we have to offer. Now, let's get out of the way first. The, the first thing you noticed was probably that the video quality of this playthrough is not going to be as sharp as the Sonic Adventure 2 playthrough that I am currently uploading as well. That is because I can't afford having gigantic video files that are 15 gigabytes big on my hard drive. They're just really hard to work with. Uh, I. I mean, 15 minutes of footage was about 7 gigabytes, which I just couldn't, I couldn't do. But, I don't think this video quality is terrible. You can definitely see what's going on, at least. So, work with it. I'll play around with the settings a little more, see if I can make it a little better. But for the next four parts of this series, this is as good it's going to get. But, let's enjoy the game anyway. Klonoa 2 Lunatia's Veil. Vale. Some of you might not even be familiar with who Klonoa is, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But first we have an opening cutscene here. This game's very story-driven. There's a lot, a lot of cutscenes. <laughs> and, yeah. So, all Klonoa really knows is that there was a dream, but he doesn't really remember it. Klonoa is not exactly sure where he is doesn't seem and he's just floating here what's wrong with Klonoa oh a voice help 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 me who is this voice why is it asking Klonoa to help him or her we don't know yet all we know that it's a dream voice is it Klonoa's dream who knows who knows all of our questions will be answered later. Soon enough. It's stormy, stormy night. Oh, there's Klonoa. Oh no. Now he's just floating in the middle of the ocean. I wonder if he's gonna run into Link from The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Who knows? This is just how it ended, I believe. But different series, I guess. There he is! Ooh, who knows who this is? Yes, without a doubt, he's the one. Who, who is Klonoa? What's, why do these people know who he is? How do they know what his significance in the game is so early in the game? When Klonoa's not even really sure where he is. Oh, Pooh, who are they? Priestess. Oh, so we just saw a priestess. I'm sure there'll be plenty of... There's already a lot of questions to be asked at this point. White screen. Oof. Looks like they saved Klonoa. Good. Good, good. Ah, her name's Lolo. You're right. Uh... Yep. Alright. Klonoa's okay, everyone. He's okay. For the most part. Good, good. So this is Lolo. And she's going to be our... She's gonna be on our side, I think, for the most of the game. And her little sidekick, Popka who looks a lot like a Digimon. And they saved, they saved Klonoa. So thank you. Now we have a game. If you hadn't saved Klonoa, well, it would be a very, very short playthrough. Ah, Klonoa is the name of the Dream Traveler. So what's the Dream Traveler? Watch out, oh! Monsters, monsters everywhere. We'll get into more about what those things are 
a little bit later. Maybe we should talk later. We should wait till later to talk. Alright. Well, uh, you just saved him from the middle of the ocean and now you're asking him to help. I'm sure Klonoa is very, very confused. And you just turned into a ball of energy and went into his ring. <laughs> you're not giving Klonoa any answers here. <laughs> Let's get this show on the road. Yeah, I'd, I'd feel the same way, Klonoa. I'd feel the same way. Move it. We gotta get this island. What island? Oh, that island. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Where am I? Anyway. Come on. Here we go. Alright, so first level Sea of Tears. Now, I really like Klonoa's gameplay. Because what you do is instead of... You know, killing your enemies right away. You can actually use them to solve little puzzles and stuff. To double jump. You could also throw them. Your main attack is actually the wind bullet. Which doesn't hurt your enemy, it just allows you to hold them, and then you do what you please with them. You're only using two buttons for this game. There's a jump button and a shoot button. You can use the X button to jump and the square button to shoot your wind bullet. And then you're just using the D-pad. That's all there is to it. Very old school platforming game. But it's presented in really nice 3D models, which, you know, if you were watching this, you know, in real life, <laughs> like on a real PS2, well, I'm using a real PS2, but if you weren't watching through a capture card, you'd see how good this game looks, and it came out in 2001, I believe, in America at least, maybe 2000, and this game just still holds up really well. Planoa got his start back in 1997 with a PS1 game called Planoa Door to Phantom Niel. I'm not sure how to say it, because um, obviously there's no uh, voiceovers in this game, there's just a made-up language. So, <laughs> yeah, it's up to you how you say it, I guess. I'm going to say Lunatia, because I feel like that's probably the most correct, but it's really up to you. <laughs> To how you say the name of the game. And the first Klonoa game is actually a really hard one to find. Uh, I actually haven't gotten a chance to fully play it yet. I've heard great things about that one. But actually, I have heard that the second one is overall the better game. So, let's go ahead and play it. This game is... One of my, it's probably my favorite PS2 game. I'll go on record and say that. So, yeah. So you're probably wondering who these enemies are in the instruction manual. They're called Moos. Uh, and there's a ton of different enemies, but I think in this level we're only going to run into Moos. Moos are little red cre those little red creatures that, you know, just seem to... Let's see what the instruction booklet has to say about them, actually have it right here in front of me. Let's see, Moo, a cute character who happens to be an en enemy, it haplessly wanders along on its merry way. So there we go. <laughs> it never really attacks us, but the fact that it hurts us when we touch it makes it an enemy, and I'm just getting pwned by these two Moos right here. Which is kind of sad, since they're the most, they're easily the most basic enemy in the game. These giant uh, ones that keep, uh, you know, jumping out of the water, those ones are called, let me look it up, those are called Dijon, a giant violent fish that inhabits rivers and bogs of Lunatia. Like the spiker, it's invincible to attacks, so you must leave it alone. I don't know if you've run into any spikers yet, but I believe this next section up here has a few of them. And we're riding on this bird-like thing. I, I I think you only ride on the bird like once or twice in the whole game. I, I don't know the name of it. But that was pretty cool. This is a great introduction level, I think. These, uh, 
These are also moves, even though they jump a bit higher because of the spring. But they're still moves. I think we're running into only those. Now this power-up, let me see what these things are called in the instruction manual. Um, well, you'd think they would make you invincible, but that's actually not what they do. They actually double the gems you collect uh, for the period of time that they're around. Those are called Mirror Spirits. And the first time I ever used one, <laughs> I thought it made me invincible. That didn't go over very well. But yeah, you're, you can collect these little green gems, and if you collect a hundred of them, you get an extra life. So, just like the, the Mario Brothers and Sonic with the rings and coins. Now, if you've seen me pick up any coins, those are actually extra lives as well. And the hearts fill up your life gauge. You have three hits, and these are spikers right here. You can't hit them with your wind bullet. You can't capture them, so you just have to avoid them jumping over them or whatever and we're at the end of this level where we reach the bell this is it yeah come on Klonoa use the power of the ring on the bell all right so we just use our wing wind bullet on the bell and bam and Lola's really excited that she got to ring the bell because she's basically giving the ring our power so, she basically rang the bell, and yeah, Klonoa doesn't know what's, what's up with the bell, but it's apparently the spirit bell for priestesses. Only those with enough spiritual power can ring it. So if you make it ring, you're a full priestess. So, good job, Lolo. She's a full-fledged priestess now, as opposed to apprentice like we heard earlier in the, in the part. So, alright. Off to Bujish. I don't know how to say that name at all. But he's a prophet. Best prophet in Lunatia. That's who. Lunatia. So, Klonoa just figured out where he is. But he really has no idea really what Lunatia is. That's just the name. So, that has been part one of Klonoa 2, Lunatia's Veil. I hope you... Stay tuned for the rest of this playthrough, and it's just going to be a good time, so I'll see you guys in part two.